Grace, mercy and peace to you from Jesus Christ, our risen and returning King. And greetings from me, Pastor Greg Vonksness of the Mid-North Lutheran Ministries, a parish of the Lutheran Church of Australia. Today is our celebration of the first Sunday in Advent in the church year, year B. The reading is from the Gospel according to St. Mark, chapter 13, verses 24 through 37. Everything is set to begin, and so we worship in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And I ask you in the presence of God, who searches the heart, do you confess that you have sinned, or do you repent of your sins? Then answer, I do. I do. And do you believe that Jesus Christ has redeemed you from all your sins, and do you desire forgiveness in his name? Then answer, I do. I do. And do you intend, with the help of the Holy Spirit, to strive each day to lead a holy life, even as Christ has made you holy? Then answer, I do. I do. And upon your confession, I, as a called and ordained servant of the word, announce the grace of God to each of us. And in the stead, and by the command of my Lord and Saviour Jesus Christ, I declare that your sins are forgiven, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. God forbid that through impenitence or unbelief any of us should reject his grace and forgiveness by refusing to repent and believe and our sins be retained. May he rather comfort us with his holy absolution and strengthen us with his sacrament that our joy may be full. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. And so we hear from St. Mark's Gospel from chapter 13 from what is known as the small apocalypse and verses 24 through 37. Jesus said, In those days following that distress, the sun will be darkened and the moon will not give its light. The stars will fall from the sky and heavenly bodies will be shaken. At that time, Men will see the Son of Man coming in clouds with great power and glory, and he will send his angels and gather his elect from the four winds, from the ends of the earth to the ends of the heavens. Now learn this lesson from the fig tree. As soon as, soon as its twigs get tender and its leaves come out, you know that summer is near. Even so, when you see these things happening, you know that it is near right at the door. I tell you the truth, this generation will certainly not pass away until these things have happened. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will never pass away. The day and hour unknown. Jesus continued, no one knows about that day or hour, not even the angels in heaven, nor the sun, but only the Father. Be on guard, be alert. You do not know when that time will come. It's like a man going away. He leaves his house and puts his servants in charge, each with his assigned task, and tells the one at the door to keep watch. Therefore, keep watch, because you do not know when the owner of the house will come back, whether in the evening, or at midnight, or when the rooster crows, or at dawn. If he comes suddenly, do not let him find you sleeping. What I say to you, I say to everyone, watch. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And now may the words of my mouth and the meditation of each heart be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. Pastor, what's this reading from Mark's Gospel? I thought that we've been through all of that doom and gloom in the last three Sundays of the church year. I was looking forward to, to Christmas stuff now. I can just hear you saying it. And the reality is that we haven't entered into the season of Christmas yet, but we've just begun the season of Advent, that time of preparation so that we are ready to celebrate the events of Christmas and look beyond it to the growing up, the death and resurrection, the ascension, and the return of Jesus Christ as powerful king in all his glory and his awesome authority. 
As a young lad living in Australia, there was a different pace of life than we live today. I remember that on the weekends, everything shut down at noon. No 24 hour a day, seven days a week shopping. And the pub closed down all of Sunday, except for an hour or two in some states from four o'clock to six o'clock. And the expectation of the entire community at the time was that most people would be in church on Sunday or quietly in their homes having a day of rest. Not so much today, and I think that we've truly lost something from our culture, from our pace of life, which has become so much more hectic, to the point where now Sunday worship is one of those things which we do as an event for special occasions during the year, for special times together with family. And I think back to 1970 when they were promising a 38 hour working week. Technology was going to be so wonderful. It was going to make life so much simpler and quieter for everyone. And we found that it's anything but. In fact, since the 70s, we've become a family of two incomes by necessity if we want to live to a certain standard of living. And that has increased the pace at which we live our lives. Whether we are in the country or whether we're in urban sprawl, we are working six and a half days a week. And the concept of church is one of those things that we've come to expect that it will be immediate too as the rest of our life is, as the rest of technology has made the whole of life. The season of Advent is our opportunity, whether we can get to church every Sunday or not, to change the pace of life at which we live. And I know that that is a difficult thing for the busy business world that's trying to get work done before the shutdown over Christmas and New Year. I know in my own district, that this is a frenetic time of work as farmers bring in the harvest. And yet we need to find that time of internal rest and preparation or the events of Christmas are like the rest of the year. They simply are one of those responsibilities that we have to get through. Making sure we've done the shopping, making sure we've got the presents, making sure we've done the meal. And at the end of it all, we give a sigh of relief and say, I'm glad that that's over for another year. Now let's do the post-Christmas shopping. Jesus is the one who speaks to us on this first Sunday of Advent. And while we would like to hear words of peace from him, words of it's all right to take it easy, just sit back and relax. Jesus urges us as servants of our Heavenly Father as servants of Christ the King who is coming again, as servants of the Holy Spirit who desires to spread the good news of Jesus Christ abroad, that we are to be watchful servants, knowing that the day will come when we as servants will become children in full and experience the time when there is no more necessity of service because the King who has served us already with his death and life will serve us again by bringing in the age of perfect peace. Now, in this text, Jesus harks back to Old Testament prophecy about the end times. He talks about cataclysmic events, and they had their anchor point in Jesus' prophecy of the destruction of Jerusalem by the Roman Empire, first in 70 to 75 AD, and then around about 120, 125 AD. I won't go into those details, but again, we're talking about mountaintop theology. This event precedes the events that come beyond its horizon and points to the fact that Jesus Christ is coming again and that this will be a cataclysmic time as well. It will catch us unawares, but we will see all of the signs of its happening. And in fact, 
if we understand that we are living in the days of tribulation since Christ's resurrection, and we are marching towards that time when Christ will return, then we understand the world aright. We're not living in a comfortable and friendly place. We're not hoping or holding out for that 38 hour working week. We're not thinking the next elected bunch of officials will put an end to war and they will bring in the time of earthly peace. It's simply not going to happen. Jesus tells us there will be wars and rumors of wars to the very end of the age. But then when we see these things, it doesn't mean that his coming is imminent. We should expect it at any time, but we cannot expect it to come at our behest when it suits us. As we look at the Old Testament prophet Isaiah, which is the Old Testament reading for today, we hear his words desiring that Jesus would come, that the Messiah would come, that God would come down once more as he did on Mount Sinai. He says, oh, that you would rend the heavens and come down, that the mountains would tremble before you. And skipping on a little bit, for when you did awesome things that we did not expect, you came down and the mountains trembled before you. Yet, Lord, you are our father. We are the clay and you are the potter. We are all the work of your hands. Do not be angry beyond measure, O Lord, and do not remember our sins forever. O oh, look upon us, we pray, for we are all your people. Here is the prayer of the prophet Isaiah. Make that time when you come again, Messiah, now. It's the cry of the people in the book of Revelation as they say, Maranatha, come Lord Jesus, come. And we are encouraged called to take up the cry, come Lord Jesus, make that time soon. But in the meantime, we will be wakeful, we will be watchful, we will be ready for your return. And as we watch and wait in readiness, we will proclaim you until you come again. There's an interesting point that Jesus makes in verse 32. No one knows about that day or hour, not even the angels in heaven, nor the Son, but only the Father. Some people have been led to believe by this verse that this is an indication that Jesus Christ is not equal with the Father, that he is a lesser representation of God. And so we need to unbox this one today. Because we understand that Jesus Christ is true God and true man, that he is the omnipotent, all-powerful, the omniscient, all-knowing, and the omnipresent God, same as the Father and the Spirit, but that in Jesus' incarnation, in his coming, to be encased in flesh at his birth, to live as you and I did and to remain without sin, Jesus did not become less and was never less than the Father or the Spirit, but that he laid aside the attributes of his godliness. No less God, but now dependent, just as you are and I are, on the work of the Holy Spirit. It's true that he died true God and true man. Remember his words, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? God was rent in two. But if Jesus only died as a human being, then his death is no different than yours or mine, even if he remained without sin. For Jesus' death and resurrection to be effective, Jesus died as true God and as true man, a unity in Godhead and in humanity. So Father, Son, and Holy Spirit are co-equal, co-eternal. And Jesus, at times, displays the all-powerful nature of God, healing, raising from the dead. He knows things as only the Father can know them and prophesies and speaks directly to the hearts of people and knows them most intimately. And we know that Jesus speaks with the authority of God. How does he do these things? He speaks with an authority like no one else we know. And the answer is that Jesus lived in communion with the Father and with the Holy Spirit 
that he drew on the Holy Spirit, as you and I do, if we are to stand before God and live in his grace. This is why Jesus says, only the Father knows the day or the hour. In Jesus' incarnation, he had set aside that knowledge. Now he knows as true God and true man glorified once again, just as he was before the incarnation as God, now as both God and man in glory, because he has paid the price for sin. And as we draw this time to a conclusion, we look at verse 37. What I say to you, I say to everyone, watch. And we come back to the question of this season of preparation. How can we watch? How can we be alert? How can we be reading the signs if we are so busy with the important things, the urgent things of life, that we neglect the most important thing of all? Preparation at every moment to anticipate the second coming of Jesus to live our lives in his presence and to work for him even though we don't see him right now. So over the next four weeks, we will talk about what it is to be prepared, to be ready and to be watchful for the coming of Jesus Christ so that we can be prepared to celebrate with true joy and anticipation the events of Christmas Eve and Christmas Day. Part of that preparedness is recognizing that Christmas is not about the baby in the straw, unless we recognize that that baby in the straw is the Christ who grew up and was like us in every way, yet remained without sin. Unless we recognize the Jesus Christ who taught and who died and who rose again for us, unless we remember that Je that Jesus is the one who says, I'm going to prepare a place for you, and I will come back and take you to be with me where I am, that you may be with my Father also. And to hear those words, that the baby in the straw came humbly, lived humbly, and worked for our good, and comes again when he comes anew in his glory, his power and authority and that every knee will bow and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of the Father. And do so with great joy as we have heard the gospel, as we have been called and gathered, enlightened and sanctified by the work of the Holy Spirit and find ourselves in Christ so that we recognize him when he comes again in this great glory. Now as we watch, we are like the watchmen who stand on the ramparts of the mighty fortress, which is our God, and call to the town, do not be ignorant, be watchful and wakeful yourself. The dawn is coming, the time when Jesus, the Son, will return is at hand. Be ready. And then, as a unified group of God's people, one and all, those who have known him for a long time, those who have known him for a few moments, Stand in readiness to welcome Jesus Christ, who comes in his glory to welcome us into the Father's rest. Peace be with you, children of the living King, children of the returning King, children who will be welcomed with open arms by our Lord Jesus Christ and into the Father's rest. May we encourage and call and welcome everyone to receive the same forgiveness that we have received in Jesus Christ. And may we prepare our hearts for the coming of the Christ child as we anticipate his return. Now the peace of God, which passes all human understanding, keep your hearts and minds in this Christ Jesus to life eternal. Amen.